To start, we can jump into the table definition tool. Here we can create a new table and define its properties. Let's give the table a name and let's create three properties. Let's name them first name, last name and user ID. Each property can have a description and a default value and each property has a type. By default, this is text, but for our user ID property, we will want to change it to integer and also set the property to be unique, meaning the database won't accept any duplicate records for this property. Now we can save, display, and head to the table browser tool. Here we find the table we just defined. We can select all the properties of the table and run the tool to show the table and all its data, though of course it is empty. So let's press edit and add a few example records. Note here that the additional fields you can see on the right, named ID, created at, updated at, created by and updated by, are all generated and maintained automatically for each record. Now we can save and set the table to display mode. And in order to connect to this database, we need to create an API. So we can jump over to the API designer, hit add, and within the new API, set the type to table definition. Afterwards, click import and click table definition. From within this menu, select the database we created earlier. This will automatically create the CRUD API to communicate with the table. So here we can see the name is based on the table name, and on the left we can see the get, put, post, and delete operations of the API. The only setting we need to change here is to enable the API to be used within the app designer and app editor. After that, we can save and set the API to display mode. Now let's jump into the app designer and create an app to utilize this database and API that we've just created. Let's give it a name and use the full screen template to get started quickly. Once the app is created, we can activate it and display the preview within the designer window to see the results of our actions as we work. The full screen app consists of just a page with a footer. Let's search for one of the table elements on the left. There are two different table types. A sap.m table is a simple type of table, and a sap.ui table has a few extra features. Let's use the latter in this example. We simply drag and drop it into the page. Let's activate the app to see the table. There it is. Now let's get our API set up. Search for API on the left and grab the rest API element and drag it into the resource area of our app. Now on the far right, we can configure the properties of the API. Let's set the API to the demo database API we made a minute ago and set the operation to slash get in order to get all the records. Within the attributes of the API, change the set init load to online. This simply means the API will be called when the app is first loaded. Next, under the API properties submenu, select the response code 200 of the API to the table. Now, let's activate the app again. However, there is still no data in the table. That's because we need to configure the table to show the data that's being fed by the API. So select the table element in the tree, and on the right, set the model source of the table to the demo database that our API is providing. This gives the table context of the data structure. Now the table knows what data it's being fed. We can right click on it and use the wizard to automatically generate and bind the UI elements we want to display. Here we can select all the records from the database, or in this example, we will just display the three properties we manually configured. Click create to generate them. Now we can see three columns within our table. Each one contains a text element. Each column is named and labeled automatically, as you can see here. Each text element has its own text property automatically bound to the data incoming from the API. This is denoted by the curly brackets around the name. Now, if we activate the app, we can see our table is displaying the data from the database.